Just like we saw with our propositional logic, there are also ways that we can interact with various sets, like we could interact with various propositions. They're actually extremely similar, and I will mention the similarities as we go. Our first way to combine two sets into a new set is the union. This is take all of the things that are in A and all of the things that are in B and make them into one set. So this is a set of every single X where X is either in A or X is in B. A common way to visualize this is with a Venn diagram, where we imagine that one of the sets, let's say A, is a circle, and B is a different circle. And if we want to visualize what is the union, well, the union will be everything that is in both of those sets. So the union is everything that's in A, everything that's in B, and everything that is in both A and in B. Notice there's a little bit of a strange English thing happening here. It's that you want all the things from A and from B. That means that you're taking all of the X's that are in A, or if that X is in B, you're taking either of those. So it's not that it needs to be in both, it's in either of them, which is an or, either of them, right? The next one is set intersection, which is going to be similar to and. We want all of the x's that are both in A and both in B. We will also understand this via a Venn diagram. So there's our first set. There's our second set. We want everything that's in both of them. That is that we want the intersection of those two sets. Where do they overlap? So that middle section there is the intersection. Our next thing is the set difference, which is taking one set and removing everything from another set from it. So again, with a Venn diagram, well, let's draw our circle better. A, B. This is everything that is in A, but not in B. So we want all the stuff in A, but we don't want any of the stuff which overlaps with that circle that corresponds to B. So that is our set difference. It's remove all of the stuff that was in B. Our final thing is very similar to the set difference, which is the set complement. I'm going to draw this in a slightly different way. There is, in some sense, the universe of everything that exists. Here is A. The complement is all of the stuff that is not in A. So this is everything that is not in the circle. Ignore my crappy highlighting, I apologize. Some people might label this outer thing as U, they call it the universe, meaning A presumably takes things from somewhere. So for example, you might know ahead of time that you're only interested in numbers. So if you're looking at the complement of a set that contains numbers, that's still only going to contain some more different -er numbers. It's not going to contain the word cat or the idea of uh, Zugzwang, which is a thing in chess, I believe, or something like that, or it's a German word, I don't know. It doesn't contain these things that aren't numbers. You have some concept of the universe in which your things come from. That is what the complement is.